Welcome back to Dick Hoover Stadium here in Vessel, the home which started regional week here in Section 4 and a pair of our squads coming into tonight with hopes of making it to the state's Final Four, but it was really the tale of two different games. The Tioga Tigers successful, the Vessel Golden Bears, well not so much. We'll have highlights from that first half in just a minute with Thomas Urgeon, but first we'll go to Tioga and their bid for their 38th straight win. The early game as Tioga is taken on Dolgeville. Tigers beat the Blue Devils each of the last two seasons in the regional final. We start just over a minute into the game. Drew Maycumber gets a toss and the edge. Number 10 goes untouched into the end zone for six to start the game up. Seven to nothing. And the next drive for the Tigers was the same exact result. Maycumber scores twice in the first quarter, a 25-yarder and a punch in at the goal line. That's a lot of running, but Tioga isn't scared to throw it in the rain. Caden Bellis fakes the handoff, looks deep, finds Valentino Rossi in space. He's in for six, and it's a three-score game before the first quarter even comes to a close. Rossi with some speed and then showing off his hops. Midway through the second, and Usman Duncanson's going to break off for over 50 yards for a touchdown, and he wasn't done there. Next drive for the Blue Devils, and the ball is up for grabs, wet and slippery and out. Duncanson comes up with it and Usman goes back to back here. House call for Tayoga as they now lead by over 30 in the first half. Doldville looking for answers. Get the ball back. First pass of the game looking but the phone is still ringing. Shea Bailey catches this one like a punt and returns it accordingly. Bailey making guys miss. Get out of his way. Eventually two takes it in for six. That's a pick six for Shea Bailey and it's 42 zip. We're not even at half, nearly there, and before we get there, Cade Mosier for Dolgeville, he's at high into the night sky, two-man party, Bryce Mosier's gonna win the box out and come down with this one, what a play for the devs, but this one might be out of hand. And if there was any question about that, Gianni Silvestri's gonna put it to bed, number 32 gets a jet sweep and just, excuse me sir, I'm walking here, as shifty as Shady McCoy into the end zone for six, Tioga takes it 56 to 12, 38 in a row, the search for for a three-peat is going well. Here's Coach and Maycumber on the win. Uh, real proud of the boys, real happy for them. Uh, they worked long and hard for this, and uh, it's right where they want to be, and, and it's, you know, it was their goal in preseason to get back to that point, and uh, we get to go and, and, and try to punch that ticket once again, and and I just can't be happier for these guys. That's exactly where they want to be. It's big, but, I mean, I couldn't do it without my linemen blocking the way they do it, with my receivers. I mean, everyone's a big part in it, and uh, it's not just me. But it's rainy, it's cold, and I think they're about to turn the lights out on me. So I'll send it to Thomas Turgeon in the studio for our other games. Thomas, what do you have for us? Well, thanks, Ian. You get some place dry now, won't you? That rain never seems to end. Let's take a look at the second game now. Vestal taking on Whitesboro. The nightcap, seeing the Golden Bears host the borough. First time the Bears have been in this spot since 2018. Starting off for Whitesboro, Q QB Kyle Meyer in the pocket. Finds Memphis Ferguson in the scramble, and he's got some room to work. Finally gets taken down roughly around the 15, but Vessel cannot stop them in the red zone. Meyer barrels his way into score. Whitesboro on the board first. But Meyer not stopping there, though. Get the possession back later on in the contest. Puts a little star step, and then he's going to toe tap in. 4-6 to remain inbounds for the score. The Warriors go up 14 to nothing. Vestal's season comes to a close in the state regional round, finishing their season at 8 and 2. We'll pivot to hockey, the battle of IAE 6. Binghamton hosting Elmira. Black Bears split the series so far at 1 0 1. Start off late first period. Binghamton on the power play. Anderson receiving the pass back to Yates and works it across for Daniel Stone. Let's one rip. Bingo with the first one of the contest. Not even a minute later. Still a man up for Binghamton. And they're going to keep working it around a little bit. Stanko on the far side. He's going to find Tyson Kirkby in the slot. And he's going to backhand shovel this one in to make it a 2 nothing game. And sixth of the year for Kirkby. But do not look now. Binghamton coming back for more. Gavin Yates nears one. Short side. Roofs it. Binghamton up. 3-0, but just 28 seconds later after that, it's going to be the backdoor feed from Weber to Thompson for the Black Bears. Binghamton now up 4-0, four, four goals in a minute 57. Late in the first period, though, Elmira looking to cut back into that lead, dashing across center ice. The first shot is going to go off the pad of McAnanima, but the rebound just outside the cage. Still remains 4-0 Binghamton. Black Bears continue to roll in this one now, sitting at 7-0-3. 